Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Enzo Van Torn from uh, Academy of Peace Arts Malaya, uh, Malaysia. Today I'll be demoing how to make a uh, medallin. Uh, it's a small little tea cake, it's quite easy to do uh, and very, very nice. So first of all, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys have any questions that you would like to ask during the demo, please feel free to ask. We have uh, people who will be uh, reading out the questions to me, I can help you answer them. Uh, on Facebook, if we don't get to your question right away, we can come back. We always have time to comment. Uh, the Instagram, if you have any question you're watching from Instagram, please ask because now will be the time that we can answer those questions. So, for our ingredients for the Madeleine, first we have some sugar. We have flour, salt, and baking powder already mixed and sifted together. We have whole egg, melted butter, honey, and the recipe that we posted calls for a lemon zest, but I'm going to be using one orange zest for an orange madeleine. You can replace it with a lemon. You can also take out if you don't want the orange or lemon, but the citrus just adds a little bit of a nice freshness to the madeleine when you're using. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our eggs. Inside the eggs, I also have the vanilla mixed in. And our sugar. And we'll combine it into our mixing bowl. Now, this one is also pretty easy that we can do by hand. So whatever I'm doing, I'm going to be using the stand mixer. I can also do this by hand as well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it over a uh, bain marie. And I'm going to help warm the sugar and the eggs. About 40, 45 degrees. This is going to help us to dissolve the sugar. So it's going to whip up nicely. This step is really gonna help dissolve the sugar because we do have a lot of sugar in the recipe. We just put directly to the mixer or start mixing. Yes, it'll whip up, but we might still have some granules of sugar that are not dissolved. Now you can do this with a thermometer, infrared, or probe thermometer. I'm just gonna do by kind of touch and feel the bowl. Now we have a question. Yes. Somebody from India is asking, do you have any eggless options for this recipe? Uh, honestly, I can tell you I'm not the best person to ask about this one. Uh, my whole career, I haven't done uh, much vegan or vegetarian. I'm sure there's an option you can do to replace eggs inside the recipe. Of course, when you're replacing eggs for another product, the result is not gonna come out exactly the same, but I'm sure there's an option. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, I can't answer this question because it's not something that I have enough experience to give you a really good answer uh, about when it comes to vegan or vegetarian baking. Uh, we have another one, someone's asking why you're using honey. Uh, honey, okay. Uh, honey is one, it's gonna give some nice flavor to the madeleine. Two, it's gonna add a bit of sweetness. Also, it's gonna help with the moisture of the madeleine, okay? Uh, you can also, for more neutral flavor, you can use trimaline, which is uh, also an invert sugar like honey. It's just gonna help retain the moisture and the shelf life of the madeleine, as well as adding sweetness. And in the case of honey, it's just gonna give a flavor to the madeleine as well. Okay, so once the sugar is dissolved, into our eggs, we can go ahead and put it to the mixer with a whisk attachment. And we're gonna whip it to ribbon stage. At this stage, now I can add the honey as well. Okay, a little tip for the, when you're doing honey or glucose or trimaline, instead of me scaling it directly into the container, I scale it into a little piece of plastic. So I put a little plastic inside the container first this way you can see it's very easy for me to remove all the ingredient, as opposed to I have to try to scrape out something like honey or glucose or trimaline, which is a bit sticky and can be a little bit difficult to get all of the ingredient out. Uh, Chef, we have questions, yeah? 
Yes. How can we make invert sugar at home? Okay, that's a whole other lesson into itself. Uh, but basically, inverse sugar is sugar and water and it's cooked to a certain temperature. After it reaches a certain temperature, it has some acid added into it. Now, once the acid is inside, the sugar and the water is left to sit and cool down without agitation, so it doesn't crystallize, and it's going to invert the structure of the sugar. So I'm sure if you go online, you can find a recipe. It's a bit of a topic by itself. Uh, maybe we can cover it another time, but it's, it's not difficult to do. Someone else is asking, Chef, if you don't have the muddling bowl, is there anything else you can put it into? Uh, technically, yes. You can bake this into any type of mold. However, madeleine is traditionally this shape. Okay, if I bake in this one, you can also bake in a silicone. I have an example I can show you later of a silicone madeleine mold. There will be a difference between the metal and the silicone mold. But you can bake the batter, but then it's going to be maybe more like a financier something. Because the madeleine traditionally this kind of shape, and also this kind of mold is going to help give the madeleine a signature kind of dome on the back as well. Another question, why are you using grain sugar? Can't you use powdered sugar or castor sugar? Often you like to directly start with tea. Would it be easier to use? Okay, powders, different sugars really have a different effect when you're baking a product and making the mixture. For example, powdered sugar is going to make it very sweet, number one. And also the moisture absorption of different types of sugar is going to be different. It also has to affect with how the water bakes and how the water freezes in our product. So if I replace it all with powdered sugar, one, it's going to be extremely sweet for Madeline. And then two, the water absorption is going to change because I'm using powdered sugar as opposed to granulated sugar inside. So meanwhile, while this is mixing, again, I have my melted butter. I can go ahead and I can zest my orange. I like to zest uh, the a la menu just because once you start zesting the orange, it's going to start releasing oil, so the flavor is going to dissipate and the moisture is going to dissipate. So, I can just begin to zest the orange now. Now also I have the ability to, again, I don't put orange or lemon, it's fine, but also I can flavor the madeleine. I can replace a portion of the flour for cocoa powder or for some green tea powder, make a chocolate or a matcha madeleine. Uh, I can put very small chocolate chips inside. You can do any kind of flavor. It's just a base batter. If I want to change the flavor, I totally can do that as well. Yes. Will warming the eggs in sugar over a bain mary change the texture in comparison to directly whisking it? Um, yes, because we have a lot of sugar inside. So, especially the, if it's granulated sugar, and depending upon the fineness of your sugar, it doesn't dissolve so easily. So, if I don't help dissolve the sugar over the bain marie, I might have some grains of sugar inside, which also will dissolve later during the baking, which may affect the baking as well. So always we get a, a nicer whip when we dissolve the sugar inside the egg as well. Okay. Same thing we can do for some types of sponge cakes as well. So I've almost reached the ribbing stage on our batter here, so just a little bit longer. Chef, sure, we have one more question. Mm -hmm. Someone's asking, can we use syrup or a certain type of coolie instead of honey? Will it change the texture? If can, how much do we use? If you do replace the honey with some other type of liquid, one, the sweetness is going to change. Two, again, the honey is going to help preserve the moisture inside the madeleine because the honey will keep moisture in the madeleine. As opposed to if I say I replace the puree, that kind of moisture the puree will actually dissipate and bake off. Whereas the honey, the moisture will not. As far as how much to change it for, you, you would have to adjust. Uh, because anytime, even different purees have different amounts of sugars inside, different types of liquids are gonna have a different amount of uh, viscosity. So you have to kind of check and adjust this one.
So now we whisk off the egg, we've reached uh, a ribbon stage on the egg. Now I can begin to start folding in the flour. And then I'll follow the flour with our butter. So again, this is the flour, salt, and baking powder inside. I already pre-sifted before I started the demo. And then you saw me, also I have the oranges. The oranges I could put inside the sugar as well. So a little at a time to avoid any kind of lumps. For this one, I'm using a low protein flour, like a cake or a pastry flour. All purpose flour will do as well. Uh, but if you use like a bread flour, a high protein flour, it's gonna make your mandolin a bit more dense and chewy. So you want to prefer to use a lower protein flour for this. Maybe nine to 10% protein is what we're looking at. Maybe even less. The local brand for this would be like the Malaysian Mills, the rose flour or the all-purpose, the blue key. Both those flowers are really nice for making this madeleine. And all the flowers that we are using, you can get from the grocery, grocery store as well. They're, they're not difficult, they're not any kind of specialty flower, just the uh, diamond flower or rose flower from the Malaysian mills. This is the flower we're using. So very easy for you to access as well. So what he's asking, is it T45 flour? Uh, you can use T45, but sometimes T45, if it's formulated for like Vinoiserie, it actually can be strong. It's fine flour, but it actually has strong development inside. If you're using French grade flour, T55 would be good for this one. Again, like I said, for all the things I've done demo or made for, I'm not using any kind of special flowers. Just uh, the local brand flower, which is, it works just fine for everything that we're, we're doing here. So you don't feel you very, uh, you have to go out and buy some kind of French or American or Australian flower. Uh, this local flower is, is good. Somebody else is asking, do you have any recommendations or books to read for types of flowers? Uh, yes, I do. I have quite a lot actually. Uh, I would say one of my favorite books by far when it comes to uh, flour, and it's, it's more on, on bread based, uh, but it's called The Taste of Bread by Raymond Calvel. Uh, Le Goût de Bain in French, okay? Uh, anyone who's French, pardon my, my French, it's probably a very bad accent. But uh, Taste of Bread by Raymond Calvel. It's really, really good on technical theory, talk about the milling of the grains, uh, different types of flour, comparison to the German standard or the uh, United States or French grading system, because they actually have a difference. You know, just saying T55 and all-purpose flour in the United States are the same, it doesn't, it doesn't exactly compute like this one. Uh, now this book can be a, a bit advanced. So we have that one. And let's see, what else off the top of my head? Uh, there's a good, book really called How Baking Works by Paula Figoni. Uh, I'm sorry if I butcher that name as well, try and remember the top of my head, but that's a really good book. Uh, not really recipes inside, but it all talks about how eggs, uh, how they affect the baking, how sugar affects your baking, how flour affects your baking. So again, that one's called How Baking Works. And of course, we do discuss a lot of this in our courses as well. So if you feel free to you know come in and, and learn, my classes when I do bread and all these things, I really discuss a lot when it comes to flour theory, milling, protein content. I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to things like this. Chef, we have a question. Yes. This is the. Uh, this is regarding Malaysia. Mm -hmm. This is the. Uh, at the time of COVID-19, uh, what exactly is Academy trying to do for uh, the full-time programs? Uh, okay, so now, as everyone knows, we have to stay home and we're under the movement control for the, I mean, better everyone to keep the situation under control. But we're trying not to let it affect the learning of our students. So the students that we have uh, currently enrolled right now, and also the future students, we're doing online courses. So we do have an intake starting on the 27th of April. 
And what we're gonna do is normally you're gonna have about 10% theory in the school anyway. So every week, as you would, every three months, you would cover one week of theory class. So just to get a heads up on this, we're gonna start for our 27th intake with all of our theory class first. So we'll be doing online classes over Zoom and or other mediums on teaching all the theory you need to get ready for your exams for the city and guild certification, as well as we'll be doing extra classes from our chefs. We're going on doing PowerPoint slides and presentations on different topics in pastry. So for example, we'll be covering the basics of chocolate, we'll be covering the basics of bread and all these other French pastries. Uh, even to a point we'll be going to, I'll be doing a whole lecture just on flour theory as well. So for students who aren't, who don't want to wait, they want to get started because the sooner they start, the sooner they can get working, then they can already still enroll. They're coming in the 27th, we're starting with all these theory, which is good for them as well. Because what happens is once they do come in, we'll repeat the topic, but they'll have an even better understanding in the class because they heard it once beforehand. And also they're gonna hear it again at the same time during the class. And these are all just uh, extra classes for the students. So we're trying to keep sure that our students stay educated and stay involved in pastry while they're at home. Okay, so now I just start folding in the melted butter. Little at a time. Until I get a nice smooth batter and all the butter is incorporated. Making sure I get the bottom of the bowl as well. And as you can see, I'm doing this by hand so I don't overwork the flour in the madeleine. As well as the whisking part, I can do by hand as well. Now I could have made a ribbon starch stage just by whisking by hand. And of course it's gonna take longer, but this doesn't need a machine for us to be able to, to do. Chef, they have, uh, someone is asking about uh, the international schools or uh, does any of our campus take international students? Uh, yes, in the Philippines we do have a program. If you want to study international, uh, you can go there. We do accept short-term student visas for international students in the, the Philippines as well. But again, we have schools in multiple countries which all provide the same source of education. So if you really want to study internationally, you can do this in the Philippines. But if you happen to be in uh, Mumbai, Gurgaon, okay, the, or any of these other schools, you can go ahead and you can learn there as well. Okay, so almost done here. Still have a little bit more butter to add in. If somebody is asking, can you add the butter first and then fold in the flour? Sorry? Can you add the butter in first and then only fold in the flour? Uh, it's going to make it difficult. Uh, once you add all the, the butter inside, the batter is going to be very liquid. So when you start folding in the dry, much more chance you're going to start getting lumps inside because the batter is going to be thicker, I mean thinner, and not able to uh, break up the lumps. recipes we always mm -hmm. add the fat in last what is the reason for this it really depends upon your recipe okay uh, now fat in some recipes for example like if we're making a creaming method of cookie we're gonna add that in the sugar and cream the two together just gonna help trap air now it really depends on like I said for this one we would add the fat in last just because it's going to the flour is gonna help absorb all this fat inside as well as it won't be too liquid to fold in the flour now, in the case of some breads, we add in the fat less because fat also affects the gluten development inside bread. So it really depends on recipes. Not uh, some recipes because of the gluten development, some recipes because of the emulsion, uh, and some recipes we add the fat in the beginning because we need to use the fat to trap air. For example, like in a creaming method. So my last bit of butter is going to go in now. And just continue folding the mixture. 
Okay, a little bit too much butter here, but it's okay. We'll still we'll still get it to emulsify nicely. It's gonna take a little bit more time than if I add in just half of this as well. So we have a nice smooth batter. It shouldn't be greasy, it shouldn't be oily, it should be just nice and smooth. Okay, so almost there. You can see there's not so much uh, butter, but you can still, it's a little bit oily, so I have to fold a little bit more. So, Chef, there's a question. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, uh, since we can't do a longer program of nine months, mm -hmm. uh, is there something you can suggest for about two, three weeks program? Uh, we do have multiple programs that are not the nine months. Now, why the nine months is our most full comprehensive program where we learn things little by little and take time. We do have a few other programs. Uh, if you're interested in learning bread, we have a two week bread program that's broken into four sessions covering different aspects of the field in bread. So the first one, we'll talk just the basics of bread. So if you don't have any knowledge, it's still okay to come in. So the first part of the session, we start the basics, then we'll start going into things like sourdoughs, Asian breads, and benoisseries as well within two weeks. Now the course is a bit faster, but you don't have to have any kind of knowledge before you come in. You can just join and learn about bread. We also have the same thing for chocolate, a two week chocolate program that I cover you from the basics of chocolate. So what you need to know to feel comfortable in working with chocolate yourself. Now, besides those two weeks program, we also have intensive programs as well that go for a month at a time. They're broken down into three day sessions, which each session will cover a different topic. So for example, one session could be for uh, bread, one session could be for vinoiserie, another session can cover ice cream, another session can cover chocolates and French pastries, and so forth, so forth. So if you don't have the full nine month program, depending upon what you want to do, you can take a course specific to a certain topic, or you can take our one month program that's more of a fast track that's going to cover all the topics, but in a short period of time. Now I do recommend that for those who can, the nine month program is the more, uh, the more easy to understand because you don't have to go so fast, but I understand that everyone cannot always do. And we do give options because we want to try to teach in as many people as possible. Okay. okay, so the Madeleine batter is done. It's nice and smooth. The butter is inside. Now I have to go ahead and pipe it into a mold. Now here I have the Madeleine mold. So again, Madeleine is very traditional for this shape. So someone asked me before if I can bake it into another mold. Yes, but then it wouldn't really be a madeleine. A madeleine should be baked inside this type of mold. You can bake inside a metal mold like this one. And also we have uh, the silicone. For me, I prefer to bake inside the metal mold because the silicone mold, the color doesn't come out as nice as if it was a, a metal mold as well. Uh, we have another question. Okay. Someone asking if, for example, we add a little jam into the middle, do we have to freeze the jam first so it keeps in place? Regardless, what we're going to do is we're going to have to refrigerate this batter anyway. So no matter what, after I pipe it, I have to refrigerate the batter before baking. Because there's a lot of fat inside, we need the fat to kind of set and emulsify before we do the baking. So even after I pipe inside here, I'm going to have to put it inside the refrigerator minimum for an hour and a half. That's very minimum. Okay, overnight or a few few hours to overnight would be more ideal, and then you can bake the the next day. And now I'm gonna fill the Madeleine mold about three quarters of the way full.
and then I'm going to chill this again for a minimum an hour and a half and preferably if I can leave it in overnight inside the refrigerator that would be ideal as well. Now I have one mold which I already have piped and has been chilling inside the refrigerator. So I'm going to take this mold, I'm going to bake it at about 190 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes direct. Now, depending upon the size of your madeleine or the temperature of your oven, you will have to adjust a little bit. Okay. Now, I've had places where I baked it at 200 degrees directly for 10 minutes is fine. Sometimes I had to bake higher or lower. This one can be a bit temperature sensitive because of the size. We want the heat that's high enough that when we bake it, we're going to get the signature dome on the top of the madeleine, but also not gain too much color of the madeleine as well. So you may find that you have to adjust. Uh, we have a few questions. Someone is asking um, in the Instagram, do we have any eggless programs in the academy anywhere? Uh, okay, uh, in our campus in uh, India, we do offer a class on eggless programs as well. Okay, uh, another question, Chef, is it possible to, you, to add the butter without melting? Uh, say at room temperature, as in when it's soft. No, you want to use melted butter for this one, yes. And uh, one more question, someone asking if they bake it, uh, the batter in a muffin mold, will it take more time to bake? Uh, yes, I mean of course, depending upon if you bake in a muffin mold and it's going to be much larger, it's going to take time to bake. This goes for anything. Uh, the larger the size of your product, the longer it's going to take to bake. Now, if I decide to bake this in a, a larger mold, again, it wouldn't be really considered a, a madeleine, but if I decide to take this batter, bake it in a larger mold, I will have to lower the temperature and bake for a longer period of time as well, so I don't burn the outside before the inside is finished uh, baking. Now, uh, one thing I would like to announce for you guys is on the 24th of April, which is a Friday, 4 p.m., that we'll be doing a career guidance forum. Now, the things that we'll talk about is kind of what's in the uh, APCA Malaysia, okay? Uh, what kind of things that we cover in our program, uh, things that we can do for you as a student, and also how to be successful in a career as a chef. So I, I hope you can tune in for this one because what we'll be doing is we'll can answer any kind of questions you have about becoming a chef, once you do graduate, what do you do? What can we provide to you to help you even after you graduate the school? Uh, what kind of topics we cover and what kind of things that you'll actually learn from the school. So people who will be here, they'll be myself, we'll have uh, Chef Rob and Chef Niklesh as well. And we'll be able to answer absolutely any kind of questions that you have about our program or even just what it's like to be chef. You know, maybe you don't even know if you just only see TV, is it really what it's like on TV or uh, is it going to be hard, is it easy, do you enjoy it, why, you want to ask why I became a chef? Sure, I'll tell you. Uh, but just tune in on April 24th, that would be at 4 p.m. Uh, any other questions we have, I can answer now. I have just about six minutes waiting for the, the Madeline to come. What will the result be if the butter is substituted with oil? Okay, I can't say that I substituted the butter with oil, but one thing that's going to happen is obviously the flavor is going to change, okay? And also the color is going to change. I can tell you these two things. One, the flavor won't be the same depending upon the type of oil you use. Uh, and then also the, the color is going to be different because butters do contain sugars and fats which caramelize inside the oven as well. But the, if you do use oil, the, long, the shelf life will be longer because oil won't go rancid as easy as butter does. But I, I don't suggest. Uh, in my personal opinion, uh, butter is one of the basics of pastry. 
what makes a pastry is the sugar and the butter. I can understand we substitute eggs because some people can't have eggs, completely understandable. But I can't say we're in the industry of making people healthy, uh, that's for sure. The sugar and the butter, that's that's how we get all these uh, this good stuff here. Uh, someone's asking, can we add other flavors? And yeah, if we can, when do we add them? It depends on your flavor. Uh, now, for example, if I wanted to add some orange blossom water, uh, which is really good combination, class combination with honey, I can add it in during the folding stage. If I want to maybe replace a dry ingredient, for example, I want to add raspberry powder or matcha powder or cocoa powder, I add that in with the flour when I'm folding as well. Now, any other kind of liquid essence, like a vanilla essence or maybe like a cherry essence, I can add inside with the eggs. Uh, if you want to add uh, some other flavor like an alcohol, I mean, we don't do, I, I don't do here, but you can also add this as well during the, the folding stage or also soak it afterwards a little bit. Chef, there's a question. Hmm? It says, does it even make a difference uh, when you study baking in Asia, or Europe, or the US? How to choose good pastries to learn from the school? Okay. This is a difficult question to answer. I want to say that it generally doesn't make much of a difference because pastry is pastry and cooking is cooking. Now, there's basic techniques and theory that you'll learn no matter where you study. Uh, I don't feel that if you want to learn French pastry, you have to study in France. In fact, a lot of the French chefs that I know, they're working in other countries, including here in uh, uh, Malaysia and Asia. But I think the, if there's any one difference that you will find is you may find that the, the flavors that you do and the kind of uh, catering maybe to local tastes, but when it comes to the basics of pastry, you're gonna learn the same thing whether you study here in Malaysia or you study in France or you study in the United States. What I think is more important, as in the location that you study, is who you study with. Uh, you can go to France or United States and get a really good chef. You can also get a, a really not as good chef as well. What I can say for sure that I found out by my five years spending here in the academy in Asia is you would think that, okay, maybe Malaysia, they're not gonna do the same kind of pastry that we do in the United States and France. Now, I studied in the United States and I worked in the hotels in the United States for a long time before coming here. And I have to say that the things that I, I learned in Malaysia and also the things that we do here and I've learned from even my fellow co-workers completely outweighs the things that I've, I've learned when I was in the U.S. as well. So it's not so much where you study, it's who you study with. Okay, we have a few more questions. Um, somebody's asking, what is good modeling in terms of look? Is it just the belly in the center? Okay, the, the belly in the center, uh, kind of a nice golden color. The color depends upon you personally, you can make it a little bit more darker, a little bit lighter, but they should have a nice golden brown color to a slightly brown color and a nice belly in the side and also have the, the nice shape as well. Okay, if your batter is too thick or you don't have a nice mold, you don't get the kind of lines on the madeleine that look like the little shell, it's fine, but ideally you want to have that kind of design on one side and a nice belly on the other side mm -hmm. as well. And this will happen depending upon the consistency of your batter as well as the mold and the temperature you're baking. I have another question. Um, someone's asking, you did not use almond flour in the recipe. Is there any specific reason? Because this recipe doesn't call for almond flour. It calls for the flour, the cake flour is gonna have more absorption than almond flour and also is gonna have a little bit of uh, strength for the rising inside. Uh, someone else is asking here, how do you make madeleines rise so much like mountain pine? Go on top of the mountain and no. Uh, no, it depends on the temperature of baking. We need a high heat in the baking. Like I said, I've had places where I baked at 240 to start for about two minutes and then drop the temperature. That temperature in the middle, the temperature of the oven is gonna help it rise. Also the cold batter being set is gonna help it rise as well. Because the edges of the madeleine, because the shape are a bit thinner. Okay, and if the batter is cold, the outside is gonna set first, but the inside is gonna continue rising because it's thicker in the middle and it bakes a little bit slower. Somebody's asking, how long have you been in APCA and how do you feel working in APCA? <laughs> uh, I, no, no, it's okay. Uh, I have nothing uh, 
awful to say. I've been in uh, APCA for five years now, going on more, okay? And uh, if I didn't like it, I could have left uh, my visas two years at a time, so I could have kept going. I, I really enjoy working in the academy. Uh, one, I get to share my knowledge. I love talking about theory, as my students probably know. Uh, I love talking about bread and pastry, and, and I've always wanted to be a teacher. Uh, I was a culinary, a little bit about me, I was a culinary student before I came into pastry, and my bread instructor really inspired me through his knowledge to become a baker and a pastry chef myself. So I love working here because I can do the same thing that my bread instructor did for me. My coworkers are really great, and the academy's a really great place to continue learning for our students and for our chefs as well. Okay, just a few more seconds left on the mandolin and then they're done. So they come out. So you can see that nice little dome I was talking about before, okay? Now, depending upon the temperature of the oven, the coldness of the batter, the color uh, will change. But you can see we have this kind of a nice brown color. Something like this is a really nice color for the madeleine for me, okay? Not, not too dark, okay? But just a little bit brown, it shows a little bit of flavor. I don't really like the, the pastries to be super light and white in color. I feel it will look appetizing. The nice caramel color really gives a, a nice look to the madeleine. Now, I just show you the color, but I don't want to turn them over because I don't want to kind of push down that little bump. Uh, funny story about this one, the first time I made madeleines out of school, my chef asked me to bake the madeleine. I'm still very, very new in pastry. I see these bump come out and I come around the other side, I turn them over and I start pressing down like this one. And my chef comes and like, what are you doing? I said, chef, I don't know, they have this kind of bump on the side. So don't take them over, don't press them down. I just remove them a bit to help them cool because the pan is hot. If I just leave sitting like this for a long time, they'll continue to turn color as well. Now I also have some madeleines that I baked before, but I baked in the silicone mold. So I can show you the, the difference between the silicone mold and the metal mold, okay? Now you can see the silicone mold, they're a bit lighter in color, but they don't color as evenly. So the good thing about the silicone mold is they're very big. I can bake a lot at one time. Uh, they won't take on too much color, but one thing is the silicone mold, the heat takes longer to transfer. So the dome may be a little bit less, although you'll still get a, a nice dome, but then the color tends not to be so even. So per, for me, I definitely prefer to bake inside the metal mold when I can, but silicone mold works fine as well. Jeff, we have another question here. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone's asking, what was the temperature used? and Did you lower it afterwards? This really uh, depends. For me, in the oven I'm baking at, I baked at 190 degrees for 10 minutes directly. I did not lower the temperature. Now, I had in the past where I baked some, some madeleines where I had to put the temperature very high at first, and then I lower the temperature as well. But for first, I think you start 180, 190 degrees, 10 minutes right away. Then you can adjust the color accordingly to how you like. That's all. Someone's asking, is there any way to avoid the bulk? The bulk, I'm sorry, can you uh, explain that a little bit? Maybe they mean the bump. The, belly. the bump? Yeah, maybe. You, you want this. It's, it's a sign of a, a good madeleine. It should have this kind of bump, so when you sit it like this one, okay, right now, they're gonna kind of hold. They have a little something to hold, it gives them a bit of volume to itself. So you wanna have this nice little bump on the madeleine. It, it should be there. Okay, now if, perhaps if I bake at a really low temperature, uh, it wouldn't get as much of a bulk, it'll be kind of flat, but that's not what I'm looking for in the madeleine. I'm looking for it to rise so I can get a nice kind of lighter, fluffy texture uh, in the madeleine. Okay. okay, so guys, oh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, again, we'll be continuing to do these demos. So I hope to see you in the future for the demos. And again, just to remind you that on the 24th of April at 4 p.m., that's a Friday, we'll be doing kind of a Q&A to answer any kind of questions that you have about being a pastry chef or about learning pastry or uh, what, what our school is, is all about.
So thank you guys very, very much. Uh, also, again, thank you for the frontline people. Uh, today I'd like to thank the, the PJ police uh, for keeping us safe and being out there when everyone else is at home. These people, they still have to go out and work and even though they may give a uh, time to enforce, they're doing it for everyone's good. So they're not the most popular people, but they're doing their job for us. So I, I wanna thank them uh, for everything that they're doing, the people in the hospital, the post lodger, the grocery workers. So thank all of you guys for keeping the system running. Okay. Uh, one more question. Then one more question before we finish. Um, someone's asking, do we bake on a higher temperature if we're using the silicone mold? Uh, the silicone mold can go a bit higher temperature than the metal mold. So the silicone mold, if I'm using, I'll probably make it 200, as opposed to 190. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you the next demo, and I hope to see you guys also on the 24th for our Q&A on the career guidance. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah